where are you with this team right now? Well, I, I think I believe we're in a good spot. Um, we've we've been able to, you know, last couple of years uh, we've picked Gunther at nine, and then last year, the year before, we had three first round picks, um, two high ones, Cooley at three and, and Geeky at twelve, and then this year we get Simashev at six and, and, and Boot at twelve, and we still got a host of picks uh, banked away uh, for the next three years. Um, and with a pretty decent team on the ice, uh, you know, we're a team that's pushing to play meaningful games. Um, you know, a team that, that, ex, you know, has a, has a combination of young players with the Cooley and the Gunthers and the Mosers of the world and the Soderstroms. Um, and then it's got some veterans with the Kellers and the Schmoltzes and the Krauses. And then it's got some hungry guys, uh, Matt Dumba, and Jason Zucker on one year deals, uh, with a combination of like Kerfoot also. And Bukestad. So we've got a we've got a lot of different type of players coming in, but we've got a hungry team. Um, and I know our coach is extremely excited about uh, the group that's coming in, just because of the simple fact that in these two previous years we were in the the process, uh, the it's kind of the rebuild where we're taking on bad contracts, and that's that's hard on a coach. You know, you, you get set out, and you know you want to win. They're competitive guys, and. Uh, your team's just not competitive. And I thought he did a great job of changing our culture in that period of time and, and making us competitive in those games. I, I, I believe he's, um, what he's what he's done with the, the group that he's had and uh, is extremely, uh, you know, uh, you know, probably one of the best coaching jobs I've seen in a long time uh, with those type of players. He's, he did an outstanding job and we rewarded him uh, with a three-year extension. So he's going to be with us for a while and he's got um He's got a tremendous ability to create culture and, and and push players, but not leave a scar. So I believe with all our signings of the coaches um, and the players and, and taking a step forward this year, we're, we're a better organization, but we're also an organization that's got a ton of prospects coming in along with a ton of draft picks still to go. Um, so we, we really tried to kind of uh, dig in and rebuild the entire organization from the analytical department to the skills department to the development department and really dig in and, and, and be that full package as an organization. Nothing ever goes linear uh, plan. Uh, sometimes you, you pop up and you drop back down, but are you at the stage now, uh, Bill, where you're looking to add points and, and make progress? Like you, the bottom has been the bottom and now it's time. Yeah. I, I think there's different tiers of teams, you know, let, let's be honest. We, we want to push obviously as hard as we can to take that next step, you know, and that's, that's what we want to do. But, you know, I don't think we're in the tier of, of, of being the Vegas or, or being the Colorado. Uh, I don't know if we're in the tier of being uh, the type of team that maybe a Minnesota is where they're, they're, they're making the playoffs almost every year. We could be in that tier this year where we're kind of like the Buffaloes uh, of the world, uh, you know, the Ottawa's of the world where we're pushing, we're playing me meaningful games after the deadline. Uh, and hopefully we're like Nashville down the stretch last year, just pushing. Um, that's our goal is to play meaningful games um, as an organization and take that next step and buy us some time for these young players to come in and and uh, and, and, and help push us uh, to be an elite team in the National Hockey League. One of the one of the things that has always been out there, Bill, is that there's so much chatter about everything that isn't hockey with with, <laughs> with that is, that it with, with your yeah. organization. Yeah. How do you how, how do you Put the blinders on how, how how do you do that i mean this is this yeah. is a human this is a human experience these guys have families you have a family there's got to be questions asked well what's going on next why didn't we get an arena how do you manage that well i, I think it's honesty to be honest with you. i mean that's the way that i deal with it at home i have the same question the players get home my wife says hey are we staying i love my house i love arizona like are we doing the reno like you know like what's going on here should we be selling like i i have the same questions you know, as, as, as the players, you know, and the ownership has really worked hard um, to secure some, some new land and, and take that next step in getting that building completed so we can have an arena. Um, I think when you're on the hockey side of it, you've got to really focus in into the process, you know, hire the best people, uh, get the best structure of staff together that you possibly can and dig into the process and ignore the noise. Let's be honest. If you're the GM of the Toronto Maple Leafs, you have pressure and media and different than we do in Arizona. When we play, we're in the middle of the rebuild. Half our fans are from the other team. They, yeah. they, they, they didn't, you know, we didn't have that pressure or that noise 
from that avenue. Now we have it a lot on Twitter about this and that, and you know, hey, you get a move or you know, go to Quebec, you know, and um, and all that. But that's that's everybody has noise in their own in their market, some way somehow. So with our players, you know, we try to get them to dig in. You know, it's we were recruiting people this summer, and, and we were talking about our our setup here in our practice facility. You know, we we have you know, three rinks basically we can use in the way that we warm up and the way that we do our skills. And not a lot of teams can, can, can do that the way that we can um, with our setup down here. So we have to play to our strengths. You know, we're kind of a new way team that believes, believes in sports science. They believe in skill development. They believe in combining analytics with skill coaches um, and, and having team leaders and, and, and making a good environment. So I believe we're that new wave NHL team and there's a lot of things we can't do. And I tell that, you know, when we're recruiting free agents, I say like they, everybody, I say to them at the end of the, the recruiting session, I say, do you have a question? And they all ask me the same question. They say, what's going on with the rink? And I say, <laughs> Hey, I don't build rinks. I build organizations and I build teams and I can tell you everything about that, but I don't build rinks. So that's, Are that's the do biggest the renovation. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> do the renovation. Yeah, I, I can do the renovation. Yeah. But um, but so we just dig into what we can do and what we can do well and what we can do better than other NHL teams. You know, some teams have one practice rink and, and the way that we run our practices, I think they're it's elite formula uh, to produce, uh, you know, uh, players that can have success in your environment. If you look at all the guys last year with Michelli, Kraus, Keller, Moser, Balamaki, Ingram, there's a reason our guys have success, and that, that has to do with the environment um, that, that we run our skills and, and how we teach um, through analytics and, and all the other things that we do that we believe uh, are pushing the new frontier of hockey with the sports science. So I think when you get away from the noise of, hey, they're moving to Quebec, hey, they're moving, like, and, you, and, you, and you come see how we run things here, um, there's a reason that Kerfoots and the Zuckers and the, and the Bukesteads and the Stetchers, they all came, they, they came here. Um, one reason probably is because that uh, you know the weather obviously is is a nice component. Uh, the taxes are a good component, but the hockey side is also a big component of that. Mullet can be an advantage, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the one thing that you have at Mullet is you've one of some of the best ice in the National Hockey League. It's fast ice. Um, I think there's an optical illusion about playing in the Mullet because it seems like a smaller rink, but it's actually the same size because uh, everybody's right on you. Um, I think we play well there. I think there's a there's a there's an energy, there's a feel there for us that we just love. Um, it's hard to explain, but uh, you know it's a brand new um, rink. It's a brand new uh, you know dressing room we have in the back that's got outdoor facilities of astroturf. It's just a it's a cool place to play. Um, you know, obviously we want to get back to playing in front of nineteen thousand people, but mm -hmm. in the meantime, this is this is a place that creates energy. You go in there on a Tuesday night; it's sold out. There's a, everybody, you know, the opposing fans. It's it's a, it's a different type of environment because some nights we'll have you know sixty percent Coyotes, you know, forty percent the other team, and you get the chance going back and forth, and it creates this energy inside our building that you know I don't know if other other teams get. Um, and, you know, I used to think it was, you know, an Arizona thing uh, because you'd go to the Suns game and sometimes there's more uh, Laker fans or you go to the Diamondbacks and there's more Dodger fans. Or if you go to the, you know, see the football team here play, there's more San Fran fans. But but then I, you know, we went to a game in Washington, NFL game, and there was more Viking fans than there were Washington. So I think it's kind of slowly changing where fans travel. Uh, but for us, it produces great energy inside our building and we embrace it. When you are looking at this situation of building the team, Logan Cooley is going to be a big part of it. How yeah. involved were you with that decision to turn pro? Um, well, I call them a lot. I text them a lot. <laughs> um, you know, I, I don't want to say it was pressure, um, but I felt when he came to our, our, our development camp, he was so good. You know, I called his agency and I said, well, if you guys want him to go back to, to college, you've got a problem. I uh, said, so it's a good problem to have, but he's too good for college because he just lit up our development camp and he had the puck the whole time. There's no way he can go back to college. So that's not going to help him practice against college players. It's not going to help him being in that. And, and, uh, and I said, you know, he's got to, you know, he's got to, you know, think about this in terms of development. 
um, and what we can do. And, and I think the other thing I, I talked to him about, I said, listen, we're in a situation where we're trying to play meaningful games. We can put you in the lineup and there can be some error on your, on your part, you know, and it's, you know, and we're still in that development mode and trying to make the playoffs, but the pressure is not on. Now, if you, the following year, the pressure could be on for us and, and your spot might not be there for you. And there might not be that kind of, you know, uh, you know, putting up with the mistakes uh, and you, you could be held to a higher standard and the ice time might not be there. So, I, I walked through that, you know, he took notes and, and the, his agency was great. I mean, just dealing with it and, and we re reassured him and, you know, part of taking in a younger player is raising them properly. You get that first year, that first year is so critical to their development and, and, and longevity of being a great NHL player with good habits. It's got to happen in your first year. And I really felt with the Bukesteads and the Krauses um, and the Stetchers and all the type of players that, Josh Browns, we've got good people to surround him and make sure that he's living life properly on and off the ice. Um, and uh, and I feel like this is the time to do that. And uh, you know, I, I, it was it was it was great when he decided to sign with us because I feel like it's the right timeline for him to do that. Mm -hmm.